Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Steve I Jim. One of the most interesting guitars in the modern age because it's revolutionized so many things that we take for granted today. So today I want to do seven things you may not know about this amazing guitar. Number one, the Ibanez Jim is the very first mass produced electric guitar made of basswood. Steve I requested Ibanez to try and find a wood that would be consistent to make sure the guitars felt the same and weighed the same. They decided basswood was something they wanted to try. The interesting thing about basswood was, until Ibanez put it in practice to make it guitars out of it, it was pretty much used for duck decoys. So finding blocks big enough to make guitars was very challenging. Number dos. You may know that the last four frets on the gym are scalloped. In other words, they have been cut away so that you can kind of grab them and get hold of them even better. But what you probably don't know is that the Ibanez Gym is the second longest running signature model in the world. First, the Les Paul, and then the Steve I Gym. <laughs> Number three, the five-way switch on the gym was kind of revolutionary, and here's why. See, what everybody was using before was basically a switch that just switched between the pickups. What Steve wanted was something unique, something different. So he asked Ibanez to kind of give him some things, and one of the things they gave him was this. On the five-way switch is a humbucker when you're in position one. But when you go to position two, instead of activating the humbucker and then adding a single coil, it actually splits the humbucker so that the inner coil and the single coil in the middle work to give you that famous fender quack tone that strats give you. In the middle position, you would receive just the single coil. In the fourth position, you get again a coil split and now you're getting that again, that famous fender tone of just the two single coil pickups. In position five, you're back to a humbucker. It gives you a range of tones that were pretty unprecedented for the time. Number four, the Ibanez RG550 debuted the same year as the Gem. It was made to be a less expensive, more affordable version. They removed the monkey grip, and instead of the expensive lion's claw, they just did a standard squared out route. The other change is the inlays. They were just dots, no fancy inlay work. Although one added feature to the RG550 is the neck is much thinner. The wizard neck is a thinner neck than the Gem neck. Number five, the Jim got its name because Steve wanted to pay tribute to Joe Dispagini of Jim Guitars, who actually built a lot of Steve Vai's custom guitars during his less famous years. Number six, Steve Vai has mentioned that he went with Ibanez because they listened to him, but most people don't know they listened to him before they even talked to him. See, they wanted Steve Vai so bad, they listened to the Flexible album and they learned a few things. They learned that he would have to have a 24 fret guitar. They also learned that his tremolo would have to be recessed. That way the pitch could not only be dropped, it could also be pulled sharp an interval of a fifth when the G string harmonic was played at the fifth fret. The problem they found was that when they pulled back on the tremolo, the intonation screws actually touched the strings and stopped the string from moving. They redesigned the saddles so that the intonation screws were out of the way. A brilliant design, and most people take it for granted to this day. Number seven. The gem is not the original prototype sent to Steve I. See, Steve I received the first guitar from Ibanez called the Maxis. It was actually a semi-hollow guitar, but it's one of the first guitars to actually have 24 frets and a 25 and a half scale length. Believe it or not, most guitars that were pushing 24 frets at the time had the Gibson style 24 and three quarters scale length. So not only did it have the Floyd with recess and the 24 frets and the 25 and a half inch scale length, it was semi hollow. The model was eventually put aside because being hollow, the guitar would feed back on stage. <laughs> Well, that was fun. 
Thank you for checking out the Ibanez gym with me today. Did you know these things? Did you know some of them? Do you know more? Post them in the comments. It's always interesting to see what you guys know and don't know, and maybe some cool things that maybe I don't know about this guitar. Please hit thumbs up if you like the videos, subscribe if you'd like to see more like this video, and as always, thank you for your time and know your gear.